And we are back for that time of the year. And it hasn't been that time of the year in quite some time, but we are back wow. for wow. that time of the year where it's Game of Thrones slash Tits and Dragons, I guess, uh, season. The, dra and the Dragon Show? The Tits and Dragon Show. The Tits and Dragon it Show. It's, it's back. No ice zombies this time, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. we can expect but we, we have, boobs we have, and we have dragons. Starks, we have Starks shoved in there. Like just shoved in, so oh, yeah. you know, that's, Baratheons you know, too. We, we we got yeah, we got Baratheons in there too. People are like, oh, I know that. Yeah, we we better <laughs> shove something. We better shove something that people recognize in there, um, because otherwise, no one's gonna know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> they 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 put some dragons in there too. If you notice the last they teaser did. we got back in October or November, there weren't that much mm. dragons in there, but here we got dragons. It's like it's like how can, it's like when Force Awakens first released their teaser trailer and there weren't any stars in a Star Wars teaser. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah. So it's yeah, I they mean they, they, they did give all of the dialogue to Matt Smith, who's gonna be the one the one actor that everyone's going to recognize. He's like and the Sean Bean of the show. They're going to like, yeah, pump exactly. Him up in there. Yeah. Yeah. He's the Sean Bean of the show, except, I mean, a little different in the sense that Sean Bean dies after one season. So at least Matt Smith, I mean, Damon Targaryen is, is going to be around for a while. Um, so at, at least, least until, until season, what, two, three, I'm assuming. I mean, two. listen, I mean, until the end of the day, you know, I mean, he doubt he dies like, um, you know, fairly near the end of the dance but uh i'm gonna yeah. tell you this right now i'm going to panic just a tad if this sure. show goes on longer than two to three seasons if we're if we're nearing <laughs> season four then you know for a fact there's some bullshit filler in there they've included to stretch the shit oh. out oh yeah i mean i don't know i i mean they'll try they're gonna try they're gonna really try to to stretch it out because this se we kind of know that this season um only gets to the very start of the dance uh like the, it's probably going to end with the um the storm's end incident as as like the finale the finale um and and so because that's the most exciting thing that they could they could shove in but they didn't want to blow everything on one big season of 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 dragons you know um so they you know they're gonna break up they're gonna break up the dance like that so I think if I were to guess how things are going to go, you've got this first season, which is like backstory and lead up to the dance, having the dance begin just at the end so you can have a dragon fight. And then season two, you're going to have, they're going to try to slow stuff down, but again, have some more dragon fighting. Um, maybe season, you know, then if it goes well, maybe season three would be like the end of the dance and you could do like season four, hour of the wolf kind of stuff. I don't know. Um if there's something to do with the Starks or, or, or in Corlys in that last bit. So, but, uh, I don't know. And if it does really well, maybe you could go into the next King. I don't know. That's but, what I wanted um, them to do. An anthology every season, yeah. the new King. That's what I wanted. But, um, do you want to go into the breakdown real quick? Cause, sure, uh, sure. Yeah. So the first scene is at the obligatory Rhaenyra looking out towards the sunset or, uh, I feel like, I feel like what they did was they filmed it in daytime. And they put like a mm. dusk filter over it or a dawn oh, filter. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely they did. <laughs> but it feels like every promotional picture with Rhaenyra in it, she's always looking off into the distance, contemplating the insanity that's about to come. Yeah, uh, frowning. Frowning, yeah. brooding. It, it, I have to say the tone of the trailer is everything is very ominous. It's all ominous. It doesn't and look dark. fun at all. Yeah, it doesn't look fun at all. There's nothing nothing fun about, about anything in this. Um you know, even Game of Thrones, uh, as dark as it was, there was there were elements of fun, you know, elements of adventure. You know, you still have a a a funny dwarf character, you still have Theon causing trouble. You know, it wasn't serious all the time. This does look very dour. However, they did hire a comedian to play Otto Hightower, so maybe <laughs> he's so maybe he's going to be light? I don't know. I will say comedians have a, a knack of surprising me specifically when they do serious roles. Um, take, yeah. Say what you will about Adam Sandler and his horrible, horrible movies where he essentially goes on vacation with his friends. Yeah, yeah. But he was amazing in uh, Rain Over Me, which is a very like uh, it's a, he has PTSD over 9-11. Very, yeah, very it's film. like the, the Robin Williams awakening kind of thing. Mm -hmm. like when you take somebody that's normally happy and then you show them sad, it's like tr twice as powerful. Right. You know? So, yeah. So I, I mean I have no idea if he's going to be a funny character or not, but 
um they, it, it from the trailer it doesn't seem like anything is is very um uplifting <laughs> or, or or fun it just seems uh seems pretty seems pretty dour um but yeah <laughs> so so first scene is Rhaenyra brooding over what's to come and uh, next up we get uh so so I, I these this location where that's they're zooming in on I'm assuming this is uh this is Driftmark it, it looks like they were showing both Dragonstone and Driftmark right the next in, scene right the, after that yeah. with Damon and Misara and it looks like his gold cloaks yeah I imagine mm-hmm. right yeah um I I have to say the voiceover from Damon is a bit interesting. So his whole voiceover is about, you know, being remembered in history and having a legacy and things like that, Mm -hmm. which, um, you know, obviously none of these characters, we really have very much backstory on um, and and, uh, what they were thinking and who they are. I mean, they're, they're, you know, not fleshed out characters. So it's, it's, it's an interesting aspect to have him, that that's what they're going to have his motivation be that he wants to, that he wants to be remembered um, for being this great person in history rather than say, I don't know, power or uh, you know, something like that, you know, like, uh, like, like if you take a character like Cersei, she just wanted power for the sake of power or Daenerys wanted her, her right to the throne because she always felt cheated out of it. Um, So, you know, it's interesting that they've they've given him this motivation of of legacy. I, I I've, it's something I've never thought of Daemon Targaryen having, but I I have always thought of Daemon Targaryen as being ridiculous. So <laughs> he's know, the rogue just, prince. He's the rogue prince, and and like they just they want him to be this like you know, um, playboy, uh, cruel, handsome guy who's mixing things up. Um, more like a Euron character who's just kind of nuts and causing crazy and being crazy. I actually uh, compare him yeah. more to Jamie because of like the mm. incest and because, you know, the sword fighting, all that stuff and him just being like somewhat of a, of a cavalier type of character, but I compare him more to Jamie than Euron, but that's funny. You, 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 you bring in Euron there. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, all of the characters have elements of of the different characters like i think going through the uh, fire and blood they compare corlys to euron quite a bit but um you know they they, they, he george r R. martin likes to make these you know uh homages to himself his callbacks to himself right where the characters are like the same but a little different that kind of stuff but um yeah so his his motivation is is legacy being going down in history as somebody that's important okay yeah well, in see this how, scene we'll here, see how that goes. he has a, a dragon egg, and Massar is with him, and I'm assuming those are his gold cloaks mm. behind him. And yeah. there's, and that's clearly Dragonstone in the back. Now, this scene yeah. for me is important, specifically in regards to aesthetics of the show, uh, the, the prequel versus the original. So, in yeah. the original, we all remember the gold cloaks and what they look mm. like, uh, yeah. vastly different to what we have here. But at the same time, that's the same Dragonstone. It is. I mean, I don't know if it's on a sound. It's you know, it looks like maybe it's on a sound stage. I'm not sure if they went back to the original uh, location or if they just kind of green screened it behind. I can't tell. But um, but you're you're talking about but uh, yeah, I can't really see the gold cloaks behind him or whoever. Or why would he bring gold cloaks to Dragonstone? I'm assuming there's a, a well. Remember, didn't Damon use the gold cloaks in a sense as kind of like his personal his, entourage? His personal time? entourage. Yeah. I guess so. It's just yeah. I mean, I, I guess he brought gold cloaks to Dragonstone, which means I mean, tensions I, I, between the the greens and the blacks, if they're even going to be referred to as such, are probably high at this point in the scene. Yeah, it's it's um. So I mean, I understand that they have to they have to take a lot of liberty a lot a lot of liberties with the timeline and what, and how important people are and, and where you're going to put everything just be, um, and, and so, you know, Masaria wasn't that important of a character and she doesn't, she, she kind of appears at a certain point of the story and then disappears at, at a certain point of the story. I think she dies, you know, in, in, in fire and blood, she dies a good 15 or 16 years before the dance. I mean, it's, um, but, uh, it, it's, um, so who who knows you know if they're if they're making her live longer or what but uh it's it's a it's an interesting to see what this scene is all about 
I'll go ahead and say it. I'm, I'm assuming they're they're uh, fluffing up her role a bit more uh, yeah. for diversity. I'm assuming. Um, and I'm okay with that. The character, they can build upon this character. As long as they don't... As long as they don't fuck it up too much, uh, yeah, I, I'm completely okay with this. I'm I'm fine with it. We need no. I mean, I co- I completely understand it. Like you you can't you can't put fire and blood to screen without moving around dates and and to make things more interesting and have things flow. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, it'd just be I don't know. It, it, it'd be horrible. Not to mention, you know, making Masari a brunette. Good move. Absolutely a good move. <laughs> <laughs> I know people are like, oh, isn't this so important? It is kind of like, yes, if if, if you're going on the interpretation that 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 uh, Damon Targaryen is trying to find a dragon hatcher mate to hatch dragons for him, it's kind of important that she have silver hair and, mm. and purple eyes and be Valyrian. It, it, that's actually a very important plot point. But at the same time, there's far too many fucking people on screen with silver hair. <laughs> we were actually discussing this privately, like, because uh, for the audiences to know, uh, I don't know if you guys were aware of this, if you didn't notice it, but the Fire uh, House of the Dragon Twitter kept releasing, like, posters of characters. And you were discussing yeah. with me Rainey's The Queen That Never Was in the books. Um, so what was the retcon that she was originally a... Uh... Yeah, so in when, when George R. R. Martin released Princess and the Queen, which which was the original piece of fire and blood so so fire and blood is essentially a a compilation of three short stories that george r martin wrote um one being princess and the queen the other mm-hmm. being the rogue prince and the other being uh, sons of the dragon and then he filled in some some shit on 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 um on jaharis and you know slapped it together and released it as fire and blood it was a it was a Fire and Blood. I, I say this all the time. It's just a. It's it's just a fucking such a half-assed fucking effort to to put out to put out content for his publisher, but like, not, nonetheless, there is a there is a big retcon in Fire and Blood, um, and what so when Princess and the Queen came out, Rainey's had silver hair, um, and then kind of they made her descended from a Baratheon. Um, retroactively, um, and so they changed her hair to being black because the seed is strong and all of that. And seed he is strong. Want, he, didn't, he didn't want to make you know Baratheon <laughs> hair, um, you know, lose out. To so he made Rainies have black hair, which actually makes one completely reinterpret um, Rhaenyra's children because now you're dealing with all sorts of different genes that could change their hair colors, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, cause the, you know, the big thing, the big thing about the, the, you know, the fire and blood that everybody kind of remembers, people don't remember very much, but they remember that Rhaenyra has three kids that are all, that all have brown hair and yet they can still fly dragons. And so everybody's like, wait, is silver hair important? You know, <laughs> it's like, are these guys bastards? They, you know, are they Harwin Strongs? Are they Kristen Coles? Are they Lanors? And it's like, you know, I would say that when Princess and the Queen came out, everyone said, well, no, they're 100% bastards mm-hmm. um, because they have brown hair and Lanor has silver hair and Rhaenyra has silver hair and George R. R. Martin's genetics are, are, are you know, so simple. They're, they're not that simple, but yeah, they're pretty simple. But now that you've now that you introduce Rhaenyra, I mean Rhaenys having a black hair, you know, just a generation back, now you could say, well, maybe something else is going on. Maybe they are Lanors. You know, there's a lot of things you can say. So, yeah. And then in the show, they you know they they make uh they they make um Corlys black, which who knows what's going on genetically? Maybe there's some some uh some 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 brown hair that could come out. You know, somehow, you know, it doesn't, who knows? But in this scene, we have, uh, we have, you know, uh, Damon, Masara, and some of the gold cloaks. And it seems like they're in a standoff, what it, what it seems, uh, I'm not Otho, Otto Hightower. Ah. Uh, yeah, 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 Otto uh-huh. Hightower. Otto Hightower, yeah, I always get he it. Pro- right, so we know that um, everyone was very much against uh, uh, Damon giving um Masaria an egg uh because you know i don't know it's just a tradition to to give 
um, the Targaryens and Valarians, who are married into the Targaryen family, eggs or, mm-hmm. or children of Targaryens, anyone descendant, they got eggs. So you think it's this scene here where they're Viserys I think it's, is likely I think it's sending... related. To, I think it's related to it. Yeah, okay, that, that he's being he's being sent to stop him from because he's got that egg right in his hand. Yeah, and so they're probably sending him to say, "Hey, no, 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 do not take the egg." Um, and I so I think that's the conflict. By the way, I'm uh, 14 seconds in. Uh, it's your favorite Grand Maester right in the back. You see the chain? I'm assuming yeah, yeah. that's him. Um, you think that's Runkiner? Uh, what's the what's who's the Grand Maester that you when we were doing Fire and Blood? And we by the way, we gotta finish. We gotta we have to finish it. <laughs> who's the Grand Maester blood. that you hate? Was it the Grand Maester? or Was it someone else that you hate because he was shit at negotiations? Oh, oh, uh, um, shit. I want to say. Um, you forgot. It might be Ronkiner. Wait, wait. Let me, let me, let me look it up. He's, he was so. God, see, it's this. This is. By the way, I think it's hilarious that that all of these channels and all of these people are coming out of the woodwork and pretending that they've been huge fans of Fire and Blood and this storyline from the beginning. It's like, no, you haven't. No, you Nobody haven't. Is, but it's no, like, you no, haven't. No, it's the same thing with The Witcher. Like, you've been, you you, you motherfuckers <laughs> pretending you're Witcher fans really, for eons. Really? Really? No, like, it, that's the thing is like, you and I, you know, being in the, being in the middle of the super fan community, like, we know a lot of the super fans. We know what they're into. The super fans are not into this. <laughs> like, and so... Like, they like we're getting into it a little bit now. Like, I think, you know, um, people are going back and reading. And uh, I think, I, I do actually think that, like, um, overanalyzing House of the Dragon is helping and things like that. Like, I was very amazed when I looked at the comments for Rhaenyra's post, or uh, Rhaenys's poster um, that, that came out when HBO posted it. And a lot of the comments were like, the true queen, the real queen. She's my real queen. And I was like... Yeah, I, yeah, her name is the Queen Who Never Was, but I really fucking stressed in over at the House of the Dragon that, that Rhaenys is the true heir, and they really screwed her over, over and over and over again. So I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm adding to this idea out there that, that Rhaenys is the one who, <laughs> who got shafted and that, that she should be an interesting character. But, but no, like, I'm, I'm not excited about... If I'm not excited about fire and blood material you know how, do i really believe that these other people are excited about preston how dare you how dare you mr <laughs> president how how are you gonna sit here and say you're not excited for house of the dragon it's game of thrones season baby let's no, get no, excited I, I i am excited for the show but for people to be like oh no no this is my favorite character from fire oh. and blood how, how can, the character had three lines like how, how what do you know about them you can't have a favorite character from fire and blood we know nothing about these people uh, you know they don't talk that is true most of it is 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 grandmaster munkin or, or so and so yeah. and but uh no uh, it's uh your, your favorite grand maester who may or may not have fucked up that i i don't remember if this is the grand maester no 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 let's see let's see um who fucked up the uh, negotiations that you you right. ripped on him continuously uh let's see it's not the melos name. it's um um Oh, are you gonna, I'm you're going. Gonna I'm going through my maester. My maester list. Do you have a maester uh, list? No, no, no. I'm just going through it. Uh, I think it's Orwell. Oh, okay. It might be. It might be. It, that might be him. But if you, what you're saying is correct, they might have changed it up. Um, because you know, you know how the show is. The show usually comes in and, and like, like yeah. uh, Jane Westerling and Talisa. So they might have changed it up. It might be a different. I mean, and, and honestly, if I were going to be, if I were going to be, um, doing this myself. Like I would combine the Maester characters into one Maester. Like, like I understand that it's probably like when this uh, incident occurred, it's probably Grand Maester Runkiter or Grand Maester Melos, who's actually Grand Maester and not Orwell. But like, I would just be like, no, it's the same fucking Maester. Just put in one fucking Maester. The whole <laughs> just time. Get, keep it one character. Who's oh, the Maester? Yeah, absol- absolutely. Who's the Maester during the the reign of King Viserys the first? I'm assuming uh, he's got a f- he, he, so it starts out with Runkiter and then becomes Melos and then ends with Orwell. I think there's a really short one that maybe who gets fed to a dragon. Well, I'm um, assuming I'm assuming this is what you just said uh, that it's the, yeah. the incident where uh, Viserys and Damon are having that whole thing about the dragon egg and Masara. I'm assuming that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. And so I mean. I, I don't know if this is a fact, like maybe they're switching the maesters around, but like, and they're going to have many characters, but, 
But I would, I, if if I were casting, I'd just be like, no, it's the same fucking Mesa the whole time. Just make it one guy, you know. Can't and uh, I have to say, I, I've said this every single time when, whenever we saw it, and I'll say it again. I am fucking loving the Kingsguard armor. It is the best, one of the best knight's armor I've seen in a very long time in regards to fantasy. It looks so crisp, so nice, so detailed. Yeah. The helmet, spectacular. It makes the Game of Thrones Kingsguard armor look like paper mache. This looks epic as fuck. I love it. I love what they're mm -hmm. doing with it. I mean, I do have to say all of the costumes, like all of the costumes on point. are on point. They, there's just a lot more intricacies like in them, in their design, like bet I would say better than early Game of Thrones, certainly better than late Game of Thrones. Cause late Game of Thrones, like all <laughs> of a sudden went that. modern and it was very odd, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of detail put on everything, uh, with, with the costumes. So I think, I think their costumes look fucking fantastic. I mean, there's no, there's no way around like, you know, you can't say anything else. They're just, they're, they're so, they're so detailed and intricate and, 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 and stylish. Um, and so, yeah. They 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 kick they 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 took it to another level with the costumes. Uh, the next scene is an HBO original series, of course, and finally we get someone. It looks like I don't want to. I want maybe that's Damon on a dragon. Who's who has the green one? I'm, I'm, is that Vagar? Mm. Uh, do we even know that? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, well, Damon's Damon's dragon Caraxes is red. Okay, that's and, not him. Um, uh, Vagar, although Vagar is um, Vagar, he's he's ridden by by Lena, who then dies, and she, I think it's passed to Aemond One Eye. Does he get? Yeah, I think he gets Vagar next. Yes, he gets Vagar. So, um, so if it's Vagar, it could you know it could be, but Vagar's huge. So unless he looks like. Is if it looks like a huge dragon. I mean, the the the, the largest dragon is going to be Vagar, um, but I don't know if we can tell size. Um, I would like to. See, well, you, we would have to see like that dragon next to another one. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. But uh, no. Uh, finally, we get someone riding a dragon uh, and a nice aerial view of King's Landing, which once again, King's mm -hmm. Landing always looks great. Oh, it looks uh, great. Next scene after that is uh, so basically, I'm assuming this is when. Oh wait, wait, hold on. I, I I did see. Yeah, I guess I just see billowing white white hair. I can't figure it out. But that's a huge. I mean, size wise, okay. Looking at the size there, it's really tough to say because like he, you know, Vagar was supposed to be huge because it's a really old dragon. That dragon doesn't really look that big. Um, it looks slightly smaller than Daenerys's dragons, which don't really make sense. I mean, Caraxes is a really fucking old dragon too, like relatively speaking. Like they're all really old dragons, relatively speaking. Preston, how, how are you dragons, not getting this? But... There's going to be someone in the comment section yelling at us at, at, for not figuring out who this is. There's always is. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's just tough. Like I wish they had more vibrant colors. Like I know, what? like yo, have you noticed this about the trailer that it kind of looks like Zack Snyder directed it? It's oh like, yeah, Luke absolutely. Ray. What the fuck? Um, but yeah, it's a yellow dragon, so you'd think yellow. That... I see green. Maybe it's yellow and green. I don't know. <laughs> Are we having a Yanni and Laurel situation, or, or the black dress, gold dress, or white dress? Oh, gold maybe, dress? maybe. Oh shit. <laughs> Just you'd think that you know Caraxes is so famously red that why wouldn't they make Caraxes red? But. Oh, uh, well. Well, well. Uh, next scene is some of the uh, High Lords of Westeros swearing fealty to King Viserys I. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, we so the audience doesn't know this. We were having this conversation before we started recording. At first, it sounded like one of the first guys to say his name is Rickard Stark. I just listened to it just now twice. He says yeah. Rickon. So this is Cregan's father. So this is the okay. coron... I'm assuming this is the coronation of Well, Cregan's father is... Benjen, isn't it? Or is it Rickon? No, it's Rickon. Okay. Rickon Stark. Rickon's father is is Benjen. So, yeah, they're doing some liberties with the, with the Stark lineage, which is fine cuz well, we don't really know what's going on with the Starks at this time. There's nothing, there's zero written about what the Starks are doing. It's a big it's a big mystery. You know, they they um essentially all we know from Fire and Blood is Alisane went up there, had some reforms dealing with the, the Lord's right to the first night and the and 
uh, establishing the gift and and moving the night fort and things like this. She does the Alisan reforms. Um, apparently, you know, you'd think they would be upset about somebody going up there and like causing trouble. For some reason, and it's never explained, the Starks are are very much support Rhaenys and Laenor at the Council of 101. No one really knows why. Isn't it because, um, supposedly, so this was in Fire and Blood. Uh, we did go over it briefly. I, yeah. I remember mentioning to you that maybe there could have been an egg, a dragon egg, in Winterfell. One of Rhaenyra's children goes up to get support from the Starks, yeah. and he supposed and that 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 for the, the for the for the the pact of of ice and fire. Oh, but the, the War um, of Ravens. During the War of Ravens, that's when like like everyone's going around trying to get support. That's when Lucerus goes to Storm's End to get the Baratheon support, and then he has the run in with yeah uh, yeah he, he form he forms something called the Pack of 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 ice and fire. Who is that. that? Which which kid is that? It wasn't Luke. It was I forgot the name. There's so many oh, of them. There's there, there's J. I I thought it was Jace or Luke. No, Luke. Go, doesn't Luke go to Storm's End? Um, or is that? Let's find out. I always conf I confuse Jace and Luke as, uh, <laughs> as well. Um, so yeah, Jace. Jace goes to to Winterfell. Luke that's, goes okay. to Storm's End. Yeah. So and that's the thing is, but but this is. This is thirty years later, so we we have no idea why um, the Starks were into the so the, the Starks were into the Blacks faction thirty years before the Pact of Ice and Fire. So they're 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 into the Black faction for some reason um, during you know prior to all this, and we don't we don't really know why, but um, they are. And so because they were into them 30 years ago, they were like, well, maybe they'll do this pack of, of, pact of ice and fire. And so they, they, they go up there and, and secure them and the, and the Starks fight for the blacks. Um, but uh, yeah, so there, you know, there's, there's certainly a lot of room to increase um, the Stark story. Nothing is written on them, nothing. So we, it, we, we have this big mystery, like why were the Starks into the Valarian black faction we have no clue and so um you know like i said it, it could it could possibly there. because jace um promised to marry one of the stark girls right but J but that comes like that comes in in the year 131 the pack of ice and fire the pact of ice and fire like the, the dance of the dragons begins and they go fuck we need allies go to winterfell and get the starks okay and he goes and he and he promises to marry somebody or maybe there's a lot of mysteries and then they get the starks on board and that's the pact of ice and fire now what the starks were doing for for like for 50 years before this no one knows we know that they show up at the council of 101 and are really pro black faction inexplicably no explanation on why so like there's a lot to be there's a lot to be filled in. Um so yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Well so by when, the way, when like like so introducing like Rick and Stark when when it seems like Viserys is taking the throne. Viserys takes the throne in 103. Um they seem to have aged up Rhaenyra a little bit for that scene so they could have everybody, you know, so she could be a little older. She she's like, you know. She's like nine or eleven or something when when Viserys takes the throne. He's she's he you know in in, in Fire and Blood. So I'm sure they they aged her up a little bit there. But um, but uh, you know we have no idea like what the Starks are doing in the year 103 when Viserys takes the throne. Like none. So it should be interesting. By the way, this whole scene, uh, the this Iron Throne is so fucking ridiculous. Because of all the all the swords like surrounding the king, if an assassin really wanted to, just in the just crowd, push him, just go, whoop. just just not only rush him and like, it's like, not only rush him and tackle him onto one of the swords, but like even the king's guard, most of them could not stop this assassin because they are also kind of like there's a barrier between the king and the king's guard on the side. You see them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you have some in the in the front, of course. So I'm sure they could like. But if you really wanted to, you could you could pretty much do a mad dash to kill this fucking guy, and no one could stop you. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they've really made him, if he's taking the throne right now, yeah, they've super aged up Viserys, too, because now he's like an old man taking the throne. <laughs> Is he old this... man because he's an old man or an old man because he has the white hair? Oh, he still looks like an old man. <laughs> I mean, they they they're, they're using one actor over over you know multiple decades. So what are, like, versus Rhaenyra and Allison, where they have like yeah. two, yeah. So who knows what they're doing? Who knows when they're having? I mean, maybe he takes the throne, and it takes him a long time for people to to eventually like, you know, pay homage. I don't know, but it's um, you know, he he seems to be. It seems to be the Baratheons, the Starks, and the Valerians all like kneeling to Viserys. So well, I'm you know, wondering. When, well, that's the thing. I'm because speci- I'm sure all the high lords of Westeros are there to swear fealty, yeah. um, as as per custom. However, the trailer specifically focuses on Corlys Valerion, Rickon Stark, and Borman Baratheon, which I'm assuming yeah. are going to be the three most important high lords so far in season one. Because when we come yeah. to season one, um, now keep in mind, Borman Borman dies by the time the dance comes out. But, um, sure, but but yeah. how Stark, Baratheon, and Valerion are going to be the and Hightower, of course, are going to be the most important houses here. Um, people who, yeah. whose whose f- favorite houses are Martell, Tully, uh, maybe Aaron might show mm. up, but the other like House House Greyjoy, I doubt will show up until maybe season yeah. two because that the Red Kraken throws his support in late on. Um, I think Ty- House yeah. Tyrell House, stays House out of Aaron it. is kind of House Aaron is kind of out of commission. Uh, during during this period of time until the dance because um, Jane Aaron is too young and so the Lord Protector of the Veil you know everything goes in a circle is a Royce and that Royce is married to um, at least the Royce's daughter is married to Daemon Targaryen the Rogue Prince at some point and then they might eventually have changed Jane, yeah and then J- eventually Jane um, grows up and uh, Royce the wife, Damon's wife, dies, and so they're, you know, the the green faction completely loses the errands. So it completely loses the veil. So, so it's uh, yeah. Um, actually, I'm sorry, <laughs> because Damon switches sides. Damon switches from Damon loses the veil, then Damon switches sides to the blacks. Oh yeah, it's it's complicated, complicated. Actually, you know what? I don't know if this is Viserys' coronation. It may be the moment where he announces his heir is Rhaenyra, and this is when he gets oh, all okay. the, the... Yeah, because uh, in the next line... I jumped the gun. Sorry about that. In the yeah, next line okay, that makes is, more is sense. when they all say, promise to... Gotcha. Promise gotcha. to... Hold on. Promise to be faithful to King Viserys and to his named heir, and then we see her... Okay, so they're making they're making the the naming of full first of all, you know, naming of heirs like has never been like a big ceremony, but mm-hmm. it, it's fine that they've added this scene. I, I I'm not complaining, but like uh and I understand I guess why they did it. I guess that would make sense now. So if if they cuz I was saying like Rhaenyra would be too young at the at Viserys's coronation. So if, but if they if they make it that when she was named heir um Maybe they could push it a few years. I'm trying to think, I have to look up like when, when she was made heir. To but, be fair, um, they did age up a lot of characters for Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, the the original Game of Thrones. So, isn't Catelyn yeah. in the books? Isn't she like thirty, mid thirties? She's thirty five. She's thirty four, like, thirty five. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's a, and, it's a it's a fairly significant plot point that she can still have children and that she would have to get remarried and stuff, and she thinks she can have another child with Ned and stuff like that. Mm. But, uh, um, oh, you know, he, he proclaims Rhaenyra as heir in 105. So it's just a couple years after his coronation. Well, well, so Rhaenyra is, is it. it's the young Rhaenyra actress. So, yeah, yeah. So Rhaenyra, you know, she should in the, in the story, cause I think in, in Fire and Blood, Rhaenyra is born in like 97. So she would she would be she should be like eight but they've like pushed maybe they're they're pushing back the the air ceremony and then aging her up a little or something you know mm-hmm. yeah, maybe that makes sense you know you got you got to do something with these timelines I, I i i accept that that 
having things having everything be accurate to fire and blood is just fucking impossible <laughs> you can't put that to screen so you've got to start you got to start moving stuff around uh and the next thing we have uh damon and his gold cloaks i i really do once again for me it's important i know you hate like swords and stuff like that but like for me this stuff is important i i really am enjoying the evolution or in the king's guard armor case de-evolution of certain armor pieces i would love to see what the lannisters and what the stark armor look like around yeah. this time but i mean these... i do appreciate that the gold cloaks have fucking gold cloaks <laughs> they kinda they kinda had let me look at the gold cloaks from game of thrones because they were kind of iconic as well in the sense their armor was very unique the gold cloaks game of thrones right but like you you think about when you think about like king's guard white cloak and gold cloak gold cloak like that didn't really exist in Game of Thrones. Like the white cloak was so like dingy and like there's nothing white about it. It's not like you didn't have this like billowy, pure white character walking in. He was always this dingy, dirty thing. The same with the gold cloaks. They were never really gold. These cloaks are gold, you know? Yeah, yeah, they are. That That is true. It's kind of, it's kind of like a dirt gold, like gold with some dirt on it. Like it's been used, but uh, yeah. no, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, No, yeah, they look like an actual fighting force specifically for the city of king's landing so good on them uh apparently as the gold cloaks going out they seem to be like causing havoc on the the peasantry in this scene yeah yeah i mean there there's a lot of uh there's a lot of statements about the gold cloaks being in fire and blood that the gold cloaks were uh, a pretty brutal um force you know pushing pushing that kind of bossing everybody around and like extorting money from people and giving, giving Damon a lot of power. Um, he was using the position to, to, you know, and better himself, you know, better his position. You know, everybody thought this was like a trash position. Like, Oh, you're going to be heading the gold cloaks. Like, just think about like Janice Slint and mm -hmm. I'm like, did anybody respect Janice Slint? No, you know, and it's like you, you're you're handing that to the fucking brother of the king who fully expected to be heir because, you know, the Council of One Hundred One said no women, right? And so he's fully expecting to be to be heir, and then Rhaenyra is heir, and so you know, and he's he's essentially the given a the garbage collector job, and he he uses it. Um, he says, you know what, you get, you gave me lemons. I'll, I'm gonna make it lemonade. And so he, uh, he's like, I got an army, the gold cloaks, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get power and money from that. So it's it, that is in the trailer, by the way. Him, him, kind of being a little pissed off during like the whole. Oh, uh, a lot, a lot of glares, a lot of glances. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the next scene, I can see, I can see the usual YouTubers using this as, as fodder, as, as fuel or, or as, as bait for their videos. But in the next scene, we have Rainey's the queen that never was, and she basically says, "Men would sooner push the realm to the torch. Men would sooner men would sooner put the realm to the torch than see a woman on the Iron Throne." And I can see, mm. once again, the usual YouTubers, the usual ones, using this as a rallying cry to make forty-two videos about how HBO has gone woke and going to go broke. <laughs> well, you I mean, know it's, it's true. It's yeah, that's totally going to happen. I mean, but, but what these it, assholes it is the don't plot. get it is the fucking yeah. plot. Like, like even even if you're gonna even if you're gonna take like the the conspiracy route that I that I definitely believe the Maester conspiracy route, the stated nominal reason that Rhaenys is passed over and Rhaenyra is later shafted is because they're women. Now, and I'm saying that that's the fake reason, but the real reason is because they have special dragon dream, dragon genes. But it's certainly it's certainly the the overt explained reason in the Fire and Blood text. So it's that's the whole fucking story, right? Rhaenys mm -hmm. is passed over because she's a woman. Rhaenyra is later passed over because she's a woman. Um, you can't get around that. Uh, it's 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 kind of really fundamental to the <clears throat> to the fucking plot. But yeah, they're gonna be like, oh, woke, woke uh, Game of Thrones, right? <laughs> Well, once again, this is what I'm, this is, I, I can, I can already see it. And, you know, these people, they need that fodder. They need the bait to, you know, get those views. But uh, no, like you said, it's a part of the plot. Uh, Jaehaerys and Alysanne have a huge fight about it, which I doubt Jaehaerys will be in Fire uh, House of the Dragon. But it's like a whole thing yeah. with them. Um, in the next scene, we have uh, Rhaenyra 
over in Dragonstone, overlooking the map of Westeros, and a couple of characters are walking away from her. I think I can see the queen that never was in her armor. Uh, yeah. I might be missing that, because <clears throat> the trailer, I, I don't know why HBO doesn't put out a 4K trailer. They could. Yeah, yeah. They don't. Yeah, and it's and it's important that Rhaenys is there. So when the war begins, kind of Rhaenys Ra- Ra- is, you know, this... Um, kind of background character for almost all of the rogue prince. And then all of a sudden when princess and the queen comes along, she comes forward as like the main strategy person uh, for the blacks um, kind of out of nowhere. And, and she's totally correct. She's very, she's pretty savvy. And like I say, like the books do not have very much background on these characters, but like the very few lines that we get from rainy during the dance of the dragons of, like are uh, like coming from her mouth are very savvy military um, statements about like the state of the state of dragons and whether they can win the war, you know? So it's, 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 so it's, she should be there. She should be taking the central location. She should be center central as like the woman who's really planning the war for the blacks. I am war- I am wondering if we are going to get a scene from the Council of 101 because at 47 seconds in, are you uh, on the trailer as well? Yeah, yeah. Go to 47 seconds. You can see what looks to be Harrenhal. Oh, yeah, that's definitely the Council. You sure? Because oh, it could also be what? like the mustering of armies. No, one. Th- I mean, unless they're mustering at Harrenhal. I mean, it's totally Harrenhal, mm-hmm. 100%. Um, but, uh, you know... Why would there be that many people at Heron Hall? It's got Armies. it. It's got it. You know, it's the start of the, the dance, because isn't Heron Hall used as a, one of uh, several locations for armies coming in and out? It is. Um, like later on, Damon uh, uh, takes it and then has armies there, and then um, uh, then has a battle over the God's Eye. But um, I, I wanted. I mean, there's certainly armies there, but like big huge stuff like that i mean that's the thing is is the heron hall i think is comes in later in the dance again when damon goes there but the um i that's got to be console 101 i think it's got to be just all these all these lords standing there i mean yeah it's not that detailed i can't really see but i i can't think i maybe i'm wrong but it, it seems like it would have to be console 101 it, it 100% could be. Um, I'm I'm curious about getting. I'm 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 excited about getting flashbacks, but I am wondering: Are we going to get any more? Because they're going to have to be time jumping around, specifically oh, yeah. because we have young Allison and young Rhaenyra. Um, and I wonder how they're going to do that. Are they going to do I mean, like if if our I guess you could have Council of One One be like the first thing, you know. Well, go to uh, go to right the next second, uh, uh, forty eight okay. seconds in. It's uh, two people carrying something. I don't know what that could be. Maybe dragon eggs. I want to say. Yeah, I think it's probably something like that. You're right. Were there dragon eggs specifically uh, in the Council One Hundred One? No, none, 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 none. So, but you, but you think we're still at the Council? Um, yeah. Then I don't know why. This could be an entirely different ceremony completely for um, the show. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. We don't even know sure. what's in the box. What's in the box? We don't know. What's in the box? Yeah, it's Gwen's <laughs> head. It's Gwen's head in the box. Um, but, of course, we have uh, next scene is uh, uh, young Alicent, I believe. She's in her green dress. So mm. we have the greens. Uh, and if you look in the back, I see right behind the Kingsguard, I see different soldiers um, those could be Hightower guards or maybe House Targaryen's own personal army. So we have seen that there are, in leaked pictures, there's going to be three types, maybe four types of soldiers in King's Landing. You have your gold cloaks, you have your King's Guard, and I think mm-hmm. House Targaryen has their own personal guard, and then I believe House Hightower might have their personal own personal guard, and, I'm sorry, five, uh... House Valerion has their own personal guard as well, which mm. we'll see. Next scene, 54 seconds in, I think they're trying to hatch this dragon? Yeah, or something. Um, and it almost makes it look like Allison is trying to hatch it in the next scene at 55 seconds in? It's true. I mean, the, the next scene they flash it too. I mean, I see a blue dress behind the egg. 
And then we turn around and she's wearing something else, so it's hard to. Is is that a blue dress behind the egg? I can't fucking tell. I I, I hate how dark this trailer is. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't have. He, he, that's a conversation with her dad. So I, I want to say that the egg is unrelated to, to to Alicent. But whatever the case, we're we're trying to get. I mean, I I, I imagine since we saw Missaria that it gets back to Missaria's Missaria's egg, you mm. know, or something. Because mm-hmm. most of the other characters, I'm trying to think about new dragons, right? Most of the other characters, their their dragons have hatched. So like Rhaenyra's Rhaenyra's dragon Cyrax hatches when she's a young kid. So she uh, Lainor's hatches when he's a young kid and he bonds with it early. Um, um, Lana takes Vagar and then Aemon takes Vagar. Uh, Damon has Caraxes. Uh, uh, Rhaenys has um, uh, Melis. Uh, I'm just trying to like everybody there there's no hatching at this point except for you know if we want to jump forward to um the the three children of Rhaenyra you know Jace Luke and Joffrey um you know if we want to jump forward to them but uh, you know if we're talking we've already seen Masaria we've already seen Damon with that egg leaving Dragonstone it mm. must be it must be that egg. He's trying to hatch an egg for you know, he's trying to hatch Masaria's egg or something. That'd be my guess. Well, in this scene, uh Odo uh, not uh, Odo Otto Hightower. Ah, I almost mm. got it. Uh is trying to get his daughter to make his move, uh make their move. And uh, of course, next scene, the Valerions, they're incoming. And it looks like they have a whole entourage of family members. So we see Lenor, yeah. Rainies, Corlys. I don't know uh-huh. who's to the left of Corley's, but I'm assuming Lena is all the way on the far right. Um, yeah, I'm guessing that's Lena. The um, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, they're they're probably just you know stock house members, cousins, whatever. Nobody distant important. cousins. Yeah, just cousins. That's all. Yeah, that's it. Distant cousins who would never inherit the uh, <laughs> the title, uh, despite all the main line members being being killed off, just like uh, Marjorie. <laughs> yeah exactly all marjorie's <laughs> cousins never never get mentioned ever again right you know or like you know extinguishing house Frey when like no women died you know <laughs> or like yeah. no children died like really <laughs> you know like <laughs> how is this happening yeah yeah <laughs> i have to say i am wondering if they're gonna cut uh next scene we get damon targaryen um his hair looks very nice i wonder if they cut it if they cut it short going forward Oh, I see. I see. They've given him a new haircut, short on the sides to make him look more, uh, uh, well, he looks different now. But yeah, now he looks, it looks more like, oh, I'm here for battle. I've shaved the sides of my head. Mm-hmm. I'm a little, I'm a little rougher. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, he, is he watching the Valarians come in? I mean, that's how they seem to have portrayed the scene, but who knows? But uh and of course, the same party is where uh, we have uh, young Rhaenyra and Lenor uh, dancing together. She's not yeah. in her black dress; it's a white one. So I am wondering if this is the same party where you know <clears throat> blacks and the greens. Instead of blacks and the greens, it's the whites and the greens. No, I, I mean, they because maybe may, maybe calling the side Rhaenyra's side the blacks specifically, be, you know, when the Valerians are you know black people. Um, might be a little too on the nose, so therefore changing it from blacks to the whites. So instead of it being the blacks versus the greens, it's the blacks, it's the whites versus the greens. So I guess think? it's just you draw more attention to it by by changing by changing the uh, the name, well, don't you think? Let's be very honest. A majority of the people who watch the show are casuals. They're not even remotely like mm. going to go into that. That's it's only going to be like it's going to only going to be like the one fourth of people who have read the material. And who are watching like YouTube channels about it? Who are even gonna? Know. <laughs> and even and even like like you know for a fact that if you go and you tell casuals, hey, did you know that in the books it was actually the blacks versus the greens, not the whites? No one's gonna give a fuck, and they're gonna forget you said that in the next minute. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, you're <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, you are right that it's a little weird that. I admit it's a little weird that when you're making the Valarians a black family and then you're calling them the blacks, 
Um, <laughs> You're calling the group that they're a part of yeah, the blacks. The blacks. Right. Um, yeah, it's a little, it, yeah, it's a little, little weird. A little weird. Just a tad. We'll see, Just... <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. You, <laughs> there's, a, there's a season of The Amazing Race where uh, it was a family um, uh, 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 season where the different families were competing. And one of the families was, was a black family and their surname was Black. <laughs> and so when when they clipped the show, like like when people did clips of the show, like you know they you know how they when they get voted off, you know they're like they're like Johnson family, you need to say goodbye, you know like that kind of stuff. You know how they always have those dramatic moments. Mm-hmm. And so like when they when the family finally got kicked off, it, they like I saw this clip and like by itself out of context, it's ridiculous because like <laughs> this family comes up and 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 the and the host is like black family you need to leave yeah you're like oh jeez. you know what you, you can't what was this was this like years ago yeah it was like 10 years ago the yeah you race. can't do this now in fact honestly if you did it like you can't do it now just give just give the black family the win just yeah. don't just, so you just, just have a win just well yeah i mean that's the thing about clipping you know like you know it's like that dove commercial where everyone's like oh my gosh there was this commercial where a white person like a black person used took off a shirt for dub soap and a black person took off a shirt and then they were white and it, and it was totally racist. And it's like, if you saw the whole, the whole thing, it was like the person changes races like seven times. Like, <laughs> so of course, like it, it had nothing to do with the fact that like, you know, there, you just clip that one moment, <laughs> like to make it look like it was a black person changing to a white person. To, because you wanted to like be angry about it but yeah you can clip stuff i think people are more savvy about clipping now like if you see something now you're like go oh, come on what's the rest of it but um but yeah at the time uh <laughs> black family you need to leave but yeah maybe it would be too on the nose to be like oh yeah the blacks you know and then it's corley's valarian's like side so hmm so Lenore and young Rhaenyra dancing and then, you know, party. And here's the part where you got confused. So this is, I'm assuming this is on Driftmark, the House Valerian uh, uh, stronghold. And yeah. um, I'm assuming this is Lena's funeral um, mm. or Lenore's funeral. Yeah. Because doesn't One Lena die as well? Uh, Lena does die, but much I th- uh, earlier. So Rhaenyra looks upset though. So I think um, it, you'd think it would be Lenore's um because she because it's focusing on her well this is clearly um, a funeral because uh, at first when you looked at it you thought like they're throwing a black they're throwing a stone into the ocean yeah, yeah but everybody's wearing black so and here we have house valerian um they get their nice you know uh seahorse sigil their their guards have their own you know nice custom fancy armor and uh yeah no this so uh, we're gonna get uh we're gonna get some huge issues. I'm assuming this is what's going to make Damon make his move after Lanor dies. Um, dropping into the water, like sort of Viking esque funeral. We get Christian Cole <sighs> with Alicent. And oh, I actually, actually, per- actually I, I didn't even realize. Um, by the way, uh, I, I, Lanor and Lena die in the in the same year. So, um, mm. I, I I totally. I totally thought that the, those events were further apart, but no, they actually happened in the same year. So Lena dies in in um, in uh, childbirth, and um, Lenore dies um, was uh, killed by his was killed by a uh, his friend. His um, friend or his lover? Whoa! Yes. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? What what what's funny? What's funny about um the lanor question is is certainly when george because you know george, george is an old man he's a liberal old man but certainly when george wrote this he was thinking oh La- like he's putting in a character that's gay and so then you then you assume oh because he's gay he he won't be able you know it's um, it's unlikely that he's actually fathering his children and things like this now of course like you know, like it's not like a gay person can't get an erection and do their duty and and have heterosexual sex. But like today, now that it's been you know 
years since he wrote this and, and George R. R. Martin being of, of, a, of a previous generation's mindset, we'd just be like, well, Lane, Lane is fluid. Like we, we would say, we would be, we wouldn't be so decide like, like, oh, he, you know, he's, he's, he's into men, meaning he's not into women. Like we'd be like, oh, Lane can be fluid. We can have a nice fluid character. Um, you know, so. Bisexual? Uh, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. on the spectrum. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, Okay, so uh, Christian Cole, Alice Saints. Uh, at this point, I'm assuming uh, Christian Cole has turned against Rhaenyra. Uh, I can't. It, it moves a little too fast. I don't know who this yeah. uh, white-haired yeah, guy, person is. White-haired person getting thrown on the ground. Who? Who? Yeah. Who knows? Seems uh, like short hair. Right, and then we have Christian Cole. I think he has beating a beating somebody. Like I, at first, I thought he was beating Beesberry from the small council Mm. Uh, as soon as Viserys dies of course the small (sighs) council convenes to uh, crown Alicent's son Aegon instead of Rhaenyra and this is when allegedly Christian Cole either throws him in the dungeon or throws him doesn't he like either slit his wrist or not his wrist his throat or throw him out of the tower isn't it like Uh, it's ambiguous what happens to Beesberry and when he dies Mm -hmm. um so some people say, like, it, it clearly says, like, different sources say different stuff. So either Beesbury was killed immediately or he was put in, the, in a dungeon and was killed later. Um, but the, I know that the Beesberries assume that he's still alive in a dungeon and want him back. But, you know, they never get him back. But that, that I, the, the Beesbury happens, yeah, when they, when they, um, but they, there looks to be, like, a party, you know, because there's people in the back around, which makes mm-hmm. me think maybe it's. I mean, Har- he injures Harwin strong in a in a in a in a battle in a so tournament. Maybe in a tournament, but that doesn't look like a tournament, does it? It looks like the I party mean, they his, were just at. He's in his armor, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's hard to say. And then uh, you know, I mean, maybe they're just establishing Kristen Cole as this um, guy with a temper. Well, he's he's in his King's Guard armor. He doesn't have his helmet on. So this looks like the party they were just at. It looks like the trailer was all taken from like a couple of episodes, and and the party where the infamous black ground uh, green gown goes on. This is it. Who he could be beating up, I don't know. But we can see his anger here, and yeah. I'm assuming they're gonna give him. They're gonna show his temper in full in full this season, which is good. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming this person here. With uh, the bloody hand shaking someone's bloody hand, I'm assuming this is a pact that Rhaenyra and Damon are making together. Yeah, sure. I mean, I guess it could be your your pact of ice and fire too. Who knows? But yeah, it could be anything. But it does look like a a woman's hand, so maybe it's Rhaenyra and Damon having some sort of pact. And then we get uh uh Otto Hightower. Oh, then, oh, then it's their faces. So yeah, maybe yeah, maybe it's a. Oh yeah. Okay. And then Otto Hightower. We get him again, and I think I can see the Hightower crest on his on on the center, which is great. And at this point, he does have the green. So mm. yeah, I, I have to ask. At first, I thought they were wearing green because the Tyrell and you know the Tyrells are their overlords. Blah 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 blah. But Hightower green? Where does that come from? Isn't their crest normally like white with the flame at the top? Yeah, it's just gray. Um, it yeah. comes from nothing. I mean, it comes from the fact that they're doing greens versus the blacks, I guess, or or, or maybe they're not doing that. But 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 uh, there there'd be no reason for him to be wearing green. No, I mean, unless it's just he likes the color green. <laughs> so you know, this standoff goes off where Damon and his gold cloaks uh, bring their swords out. So it's a it's a problem. And then we have Alicent, and we we did we saw in the last teaser that Alicent, the knife she had in her hand, was the Valyrian yeah. steel dagger used in Bran's assassination attempt in Game of Thrones. Yes, season one. Uh, later, and we were like, "Is that just a Night prop King. thing? Like, why on earth would she have that?" It's a nice callback. Like, it's a nice little Easter egg that they're putting in there. I appreciate it. It doesn't have to be there, but it is there whatever i appreciate it nice little callback i'm assuming this is her <clears throat> getting very upset yeah uh because this is after aemon loses i'm assuming this is after aemon loses his eye so she's like hysterical upset that this has happened maybe she thinks her son's gonna die goes into in there wants revenge kind of is trying to attack rainier um yeah i'm assuming that's yeah. that's what it is uh, okay and the f- and the final scene of the trailer is Damon is going in and what is he, who is this dragon that he's trying to, I guess, get close to? Is this fake? 
No. Hmm. Is is there a dragon he attempts to tame but can't? Well, keep in mind that that, that um, Damon Damon starts riding Caraxes like years and years and years before before any event in this story is gonna take place. Like he's already riding a, a dragon by the by um, Council One Hundred and One and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. So it depends if we're going like you know, how far the story goes forward. So we, we know that one of the savvy things about when, when I mentioned before about Rhaenys being, a, being an incredibly important character as the main military strategist, it's, it's her. So when the war begins, the blacks are kind of like, oh, how, how are we going to win when we're stuck on an Island and they have uh, more dragons and, and, Rhaenys is like, no, we have more dragons. We just have dragons that haven't been mounted yet. And right. So there's all but, these unmounted dragons on Dragonstone that they need to take advantage of. But um, is Damon it, ever involved in that? Because I, if I remember correctly, those are the dragon seeds, which I'm assuming will be yeah. season two. Right. Yeah, the dragon seeds do it. Um, so, I mean, it could be something like that, that they're just using Damon as the person who's going down and, and, and checking it out. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's no way that, that he should be... Um, like trying to mount a dragon, trying to trying to get a dragon or anything like that, you know. Uh, um, so I don't know. I mean, you know, we're talking about like Adam of Hull and 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 Ulf the White and Nettles and stuff. Like, no, nah, they're not doing those characters. Yeah, they got to kill off a few more yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> they got a few more. People. I don't know. I have, have to think about that on like what care what, what what dragon that could be and why he would be going down there. I mean, it's, it looks like a big dragon. So, you know, may, but, um, but, um, I don't know. Would, uh, uh, but that's it. That's the trailer. Um, I mean, I am excited for it. What I'm not excited for, and we discussed this right before, we were briefly discussing this. I told you to save it for the, the podcast. Um, you're not excited for what? The mad dash from everybody? Like what's, what's, what, what did you <sighs> want to say? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess the. Yeah, the mad dash for everything. I think I guess the um, the I guess the faux excitement that 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 a lot of people have to pretend to have. <laughs> 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 like I just want to be kind of realistic about it. Like you know, you know, it looks visually incredible. Um, it's 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 weak written material. Like it's not great written material. Um, you know, we'll see if they're able to like spin it into something um, interesting. Uh, uh, you know, you know, you know. I'm cautiously optimistic that it'll be an okay show. But um, what makes me optimistic is that HBO was willing to throw away a thirty million dollar pilot because they didn't <laughs> feel it was good enough. If yeah. if they didn't feel that was good enough, and when they decided to go with this, I'm somewhat confident that it'll it'll be at least above average, decent, above average, yeah, much better yeah. than fucking Picard. Oh my god. Oh my god. Have you been have you been yeah. uh, uh have you been watching that dumpster fire? I, I, I watched I watched um Red Letter Media's uh wait until they uh they, they come out with their uh seasonal uh They were so sad. They weren't even like they couldn't even make fun of it anymore. They, they couldn't like... because it's sad. It's it's sad at the state that Star Trek has yeah. become. It's become very diluted. It's uh it's it's not good. It's really. I tried giving it the benefit of the doubt. But it's when really when, not they, good. when they when he started going he started going on that like faux deep speech of Picard, like I just started <laughs> laughing so much. I was like, the reason we are human is that we look to the stars, and in the stars we see ourselves and all that we can become, and the potential for it between us, and the love that we share. For one another, and you're like, what are you fucking saying? Like, you're like, oh my god, you're so right that it's just this like faux ridiculous stuff that like wants to sound smart and it's not. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments and questions down below. I'm down to do a a, a Q and A. I have to get back to doing non podcast related videos because I haven't done a video by myself in quite some time. So, uh, Preston, as much as I love you, we will continue doing this podcast, but I have to release some videos by myself. Sure thing. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to when House of the Dragon comes back, as you will. People keep asking, are you going to bring back uh, uh, 
Brandon and uh, Chad Summerchild for your reviews? We'll see. We'll see. Or the ancestors of Chad Summerchild and and, <laughs> and, and all those other guys? Yes. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> 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 have, them, have them wear like different outfits <laughs> <laughs> alright that's a pretty good idea <laughs> <laughs> there you go guys thank you so much for joining us as always we'll see you all next time have a good one